Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Fernando Florido, a GP in the United Kingdom. In today's episode, we will discuss hypertensive emergencies and the NICE guidance on same-day referral for hypertension. Please note, this is my interpretation and not medical advice. It's intended for healthcare professionals and you must use your clinical judgment. Remember that there's also a podcast version of these videos, so have a look in the description below. Dealing with hypertension can be challenging, but the good thing is that we often have time to decide on the right treatment. However, in some situations we do not have the luxury of time due to hypertensive emergencies. Today, we will focus on how to identify and manage these emergencies. Before we start, I would like to share some tips I've learned from my 25 years experience as a GP. Remember that we're treating the patient, not the blood pressure. The patient that we're going to be talking about today is not your typical happy, hypertensive patient. We're talking about patients who are not well, they're not happy. They will tell us and we will see it. They may have a headache or chest pains or extreme fatigue, abdominal pain, shortness of breath, visual disturbances, etc. And then the blood pressure is also very high this situation is when we need to worry. So, if someone comes into our consulting room with a spring on their step, happy and smiling and saying, hello, how are you today? We're not going to be instantly worried, even if the blood pressure is very high. On the other hand, we may really worry about somebody who looks unwell, even if the blood pressure is lower. Also, when we finish the consultation, we like the patient to live happy, but we should also feel happy about our management. So, following our instinct, our gut feeling is very important. We shouldn't let the patient go if we're not entirely happy with their management. It would be better to tell them, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit concerned about your blood pressure today and I would like to recheck it in a few minutes. Please sit quietly in the waiting room for 15-20 minutes and then we will recheck it. And then we can use that time to seek advice. We will normally be working along someone else, so maybe we could ask a colleague or an experienced doctor in the practice. If we happen to be alone or no one is available, then, and I know that this is not going to be popular with hospital doctors, we could just pick up the phone and ask to speak to the medical duty doctor at the hospital. We will explain why we're worried and we will get their advice and guidance. And in the worst case scenario, if there's no one around and nobody picks up the phone, it's probably best just to send the patient to A&E or the emergency department. Feeling a little silly when the patient tells us, why did you send me there, it was a waste of time, is better than having the patient asking us, why didn't you, because something horrible has happened. But don't worry, all that comes with experience and our clinical judgment improves all the time. Until then, it's also a good idea to rely on clear, nice guidance, which is what we're going to do just now. So what do the guidelines actually say? In summary, that we should arrange an urgent or same-day referral in hypertension when we're worried about either the patient's blood pressure levels or the symptoms. Let's start when we're worried about the blood pressure levels, that is, when the patient's blood pressure is very high and there are red flags. And this situation would be when the blood pressure is 180 over 120 or higher and they have either signs of retinal hemorrhage or papilledema or new onset of life-threatening symptoms. Let's look at the retinal hemorrhage and papilledema first. They're often a sign of accelerated or malignant hypertension, which is often when the blood pressure is over 220 over 120. And you're probably screaming at me now saying, I can't do fundoscopy. And that is fine. Fundoscopy is quite a skill to master and many, if not most, doctors will not be trained at a level that makes their examinations reliable. So what would we do? We should then be guided by the possible symptoms of retinal hemorrhage or papilledema, which are all of these. Blurred or distorted vision, vision loss, either partial or complete, seeing spots or having floaters, reduced peripheral vision, difficulty seeing in the dark, eye pain or discomfort, headaches, nausea and vomiting, flashing lights and double vision. 
but we also need to be aware that a retinal hemorrhage can have no symptoms at all. That would be the case, for example, when the bleeding is small or occurs in the periphery of the retina. But normally that would be spotted because we would always do investigations for target organ damage on initial diagnosis and these investigations always include fundoscopy. So there will always be opportunities to spot this problem. But you probably want to shout at me again saying I told you I can't do fundoscopy. And basically what we need to do is refer the patient for fundoscopy to either a doctor skilled in fundoscopy or an optician. If we're worried because the blood pressure is 180 or 120 or higher and the patient has visual symptoms, we could play safe and send the patient to A&E or the emergency department. However, if they have a blood pressure of 180 over 120 or higher and they do not have any symptoms, a more sensible approach would be to arrange an urgent referral to an optician or a doctor skilled in fundoscopy, which should ideally be done the same or next day. A top tip. Even though you say that you can't do fundoscopy, I would advise you to love your ophthalmoscope and to use it. Look at the fundi every time that an opportunity comes along. We will probably not see anything half of the times, and the other half we will not know what we're seeing. It will not change our management, and we will still refer the patient for a proper assessment. However, over time, perhaps many years of practice and experience, we may learn to spot something, and even small victories can be satisfying and good for our professional development. Right, now, if we go to the previous slide, we see that we have dealt with the issue of high blood pressure and retinal concerns. The next point is to address a high blood pressure of 180 over 120 or higher with new onset life-threatening symptoms. And what are these threatening symptoms? They would be new onset confusion, chest pain, signs of heart failure or acute kidney injury or AKI. Okay. New onset confusion and chest pain are very clear, but heart failure and AKI? You may be saying now, how can we diagnose new onset heart failure the same day? Organizing blood tests and echocardiograms take time. So we do what we always do, which is to be guided by the symptoms, which we can also confirm with a physical examination. And we need to remember that we're talking about new onset heart failure, which is basically acute heart failure. So we're not talking about those patients who have chronic heart failure and have a little bit of shortness of breath or a bit of leg edema, etc. We're talking about acute or acute on chronic heart failure, which is when the patient is unwell. So we're talking about sending to A&E or the emergency department any unwell patient with a blood pressure of 180 over 120 or higher and with any of the following new symptoms. Shortness of breath, coughing or wheezing, especially at night and on when lying down, tachycardia, arrhythmia, leg, ankle or foot edema, fatigue and weakness, nausea and loss of appetite, confusion or disorientation, and chest pain or pressure. And now you may also be saying, how can we diagnose new onset AKI the same day? Renal function test results take time. So again, we do what we always do, which is to be guided by the symptoms. And we need to remember that we're talking about acute kidney injury, which is an acute problem. We're not talking about those patients who have CKD and have a few symptoms here and there. We're talking about an acute injury to the kidneys, which is when the patient is unwell. So we're talking about sending to A&E or the emergency department any unwell patient with a blood pressure of 180 over 120 or higher and with any of the following new symptoms decreased urine output or no urine output leg, ankle, foot edema fatigue and weakness, shortness of breath nausea and vomiting, confusion or disorientation and chest pain or pressure so we now go back to our very first slide and we can see that we have dealt with concerns about patients' blood pressure levels. But there's still the question of symptoms. So, 
Do you ever refer the same day if the blood pressure is below 180 over 120? And the answer is yes, because we would refer patients if they have pheochromocytoma symptoms. Now we need to remember that a pheochromocytoma is a rare tumour of the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands produce adrenaline and noradrenaline, which control heart rate, blood pressure and metabolism. A pheochromocytoma can produce too much adrenaline and noradrenaline, which often results in problems such as palpitations and high blood pressure. So what are those symptoms? The symptoms of a pheochromocytoma tend to be unpredictable, often occurring in sudden attacks lasting from a few minutes to an hour, sometimes longer. And the patient will therefore be intermittently unwell. So we're talking about sending to a &E or the emergency department any patient who has hypertension without a specific blood pressure threshold and who is intermittently unwell with any of the following symptoms. Headache, palpitations, pallor, abdominal pain, and diaphoresis or excessive sweating. Right, will that be difficult to remember? No. Because in real life, we will have common sense. We will follow our instinct and we will do what we would normally do with any seriously unwell patient. For example, regardless of blood pressure, would we refer a patient to any or the emergency department if they are unwell with any of these symptoms? Acute confusion, acute chest pain, acute shortness of breath, acutely unwell with decreased urine output or no urine output? So the answer is yes, and we would do this regardless of the blood pressure. In fact, we would probably call the ambulance first and then check the blood pressure later. Then, would we refer a patient to A&E or the emergency department if they had a blood pressure of 180 over 120 or higher, and either visual disturbances or the patient is unwell? And the answer is yes especially if they have tachycardia or arrhythmia, leg or ankle edema, fatigue and weakness, coughing or wheezing, especially at night or when lying down, and nausea and vomiting. And after what we have learned today, would we refer a hypertensive patient to any or the emergency department if they were intermittently unwell with any of these symptoms? Palpitations, pallor, abdominal pain or diaphoresis? And the answer is yes, we would do that because we would be worried about pheochromocytoma and we would do it regardless of the blood pressure at the time. But remember that this is only my interpretation of the guideline, so it's not necessarily correct. Please let me know your views in the comment section below. We have come to the end of this video. I hope that you have found it useful. And if so, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching and goodbye.